Welcome to World Action and Reaction News, let's start today's news snapshot. Before starting this news session my request to you all, please press subscribe button and press bell icon for regular updates on new video upload, if you are new to this channel, and also press like button if you find this video useful to you. Let's start. Today's first news coming from ISRO. Larson and Tibro, Godrej and Hindustan Aeronautics Ltd will join a consortium, being put together by Indian Space Research Organization, IRO, to build Polar Satellite Launch Vehicles, PSLVs. The vehicles will launch small satellites, and the first launch is being planned by 2020. A pact is to be signed by January for this initiative, said a source. India's space agency, which has designed the rocket, has been building and launching satellites, including probes for the Moon and Mars missions, on its own. It has more work on its plate to meet the country's requirement of building heavier rockets and reusable spacecraft that can carry bigger satellites and a capsule that will eventually put a man in space. There is a huge spurt in demand to launch smaller satellites, those as light as one kilogram, with a lifespan of two to three years. But there aren't enough rockets to carry these. The PSLV, following its successful 104 satellite launch in February, has emerged as a preferred vehicle for small satellite launches globally. Spaceworks, a U.S. satellite researcher, estimates that about 2,400 nano and micro satellites are expected to be launched between 2017 and 2023. The latest forecast says nearly 60% of the satellites planned are from private players against 40 per center in the five years to 2016. Iro says India is a sweet spot to tap this opportunity. It is gearing up to allow private players that have built systems and components for its space program to completely integrate rockets. This way, these players can meet local requirement and offer an integrated service of building satellites, launch these for global customers on Indian soil and also manage these as a service. For this, a company is being formed with Antrix, the commercial arm of IRO, as an anchor but with a larger stake for private players. LNT, which builds equipment for rockets and satellites, Godrej that makes the Vikas engines for the PSLV, and HAL which makes its composite frame will be the main partners. The Indian and Japanese navies on Sunday started an intensive air anti-submarine warfare exercise in the Indian Ocean, a defense official said. The exercise in the Arabian Sea will conclude on October 31, Indian Navy spokesperson Captain D.K. Sharma said in a tweet. A P-8I long-range maritime reconnaissance anti-submarine warfare aircraft of Indian Navy and two P-3 Orion anti-submarine warfare aircraft of Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, JMDSF, will participate in the exercise. The P-3 Orion aircraft reached the Naval Air Station in Shansa in Goa on Sunday for the exercise which comes when presence of Chinese ships and submarines in the Indian Ocean has increased and Beijing has been posturing aggressively in the South China Sea. Maritime security and freedom of navigation has also figured prominently in India's recent bilateral and multilateral defense dialogues. India and Japan, along with US had also focused on anti-submarine warfare in the trilateral exercise Malabar in July this year. China had said at that time that it hoped the exercise is not aimed at other countries. Maritime security was a key subject during interactions between Defence Minister Nirmala Sitharaman and French Defence Minister Florence Parley, as well as with US Defence Secretary James Mattis during their recent visits. When then Defence Minister Aaron Jaitley went to Japan for a bilateral defence dialogue in September, maritime security was again in focus. A state-of-the-art electronic artillery fuse manufacturing facility was launched at the PUN unit of Bharat Electronics Ltd, Bell, on October 27. The development comes after a compliance report from the Controller and Auditor General, CAG, of India, which was tabled before the Parliament in July this year, revealed 83 percenter shortage of artillery fuses with the Army. Artillery fuses, known as the brain of the munition, are the devices that initiate explosion. They also determine how the explosion would be initiated on contact with the target or some time after the launch. A senior Bell official said, PUN unit of the Bell, headquartered in Defence Public Sector undertaking in Bengaluru, 
which has a multi-product facility that manufactures laser-based range-finding equipment, power packs for wireless radio sets, infantry combat vehicle-based nuclear biological chemical and reconnaissance systems, along with X-ray baggage scanners. The facility has diversified into the field of electronic artillery fuses. Bell has nine manufacturing units spread all over the country. The newly inaugurated facility has a capacity to make more than 50,000 electronic fuses per month, and can augment this capacity as per the requirement of the Army. Bell, pun, also plans to expand the fuse manufacturing capability in the near future. With this facility going online, Bell is confident of fulfilling all the needs of electronic fuses for our artillery today and in times to come, he added. Even as the military standoff between India and China was on Doklam Plateau, the Indian Army carried out its biggest exercise, involving actual war gaming with troops, in the Himalayas. The 74-day standoff, June 16 to August 28, did not come in the way of Army's 17 crops to conduct its scheduled two-month-long exercise that commenced in the first week of August and ended just a week before Diwali. The 17 Corps is also known as the Mountain Strike Corps. A brigade strength, around 3,500 men, exercise was carried out in strategically located eastern Ladakh. Though this could have sent a message to China that Delhi was ramping up, the exercise was carried out. Eastern Ladakh, part of Jammu and Kashmir, shares a 26 km frontier with China and is geographically defined as the area from Karakoram Pass in the north to Demchok in the southeast. Eastern Ladakh a barren landscape dotted with high mountains and equally high passes has been virtually militarily tailored to prevent a repeat of 1962 when China, with a few exceptions, literally overran the Indian military defences. Indian war gaming aimed at stopping the People Liberation Armies, PLA, of China in case of a war in the sector. This includes a method of getting real-time updates on Chinese movement using satellite imagery, countering their patrols along the disputed line of actual control, LAC, the de facto border with own patrols. Maintaining a minimum level of firepower and future stationing of fighter jets at LAT, the key airbase in Ladakh. The Army has already stationed three regiments of tanks in Ladakh. India and China have differing perception along the lack, including Pangongtso. The subsector north, which includes Dipsang Plains at 18,000 feet and also the areas abutting the Aksai Chin and Galwan, is among the other flashpoints. The detailed project report, DPR, for refurbishing the INS Virate will be ready in a fortnight and it will be then submitted to the Union government. The Andhra Pradesh government intends to convert the Indian Navy's warhorse aircraft carrier into a museum and a hotel in the sea, depending on the logistics. The ship will be brought to Kakanada for refurbishment as soon as the DPR is approved by the Union government. Representatives of Mumbai-based Master and Associates, which is preparing the DPR, are likely to meet Chief Minister N. Chandra Babu Naidu in the next couple of days to discuss some key aspects of the report. In fact, the meeting has been put on hold because of Mr. Naidu's foreign tour. Based on the suggestions and inputs by the Chief Minister, preparation of the DPR would be finalized, according to sources in the Secretariat. It would cost between, 15 crore and, 20 crore to bring in Zvirate from Mumbai to Kakanada, the sources say. The Indian Navy says that the ship cannot be dragged onto the land and has to be kept afloat. A tussle between the bureaucrats in the Ministry of Defence, MOD, and the Indian Army has virtually brought back the Army's proposal to equip its 50 mechanist infantry with the future Infantry Combat Vehicle, FICV, to the drawing board after eight years in the process. Initiated in 2009, the project has been stuck since the Defence Acquisition Wing of MOD objected to the Army's proposal to engage two private players to develop the prototype along with the Ordnance Factory Board. The ministry wants that at least five privates should get opportunity. Now the file has come back to the army headquarters asking for a detailed project report. The army has been pushing for the combat vehicle as it badly needs to replace the four-decade-old BMPs. According to proposal, the government will fund 80 per center of the development cost, i.e., around 3,000 crore to each of the companies, to build the FICV prototypes. 
the one selected will be finally awarded the contract for mass production. The Army Brass feels that the inclusion of three more companies would lead to a massive cost escalation to 15,000 crore just in developing the prototype. The total cost of the project is 65,000 crore. However, a ministry official said, We have been receiving representations from some private players, and it seems due process was not followed in shortlisting the two players. So, we have asked the Army to engage all five players who had initially responded to Army's proposal. The Army was initially slated to induct 835 new FICVs by 2017, with another 1,479 coming in by 2022. But now it will take another decade, according to a defense official. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this news. Please share your views in comment box. Please like and share this video. Press subscribe button and bell for auto update to you regarding my channel world action and reaction news, warn.